Hello, this is Mrs. Schaefer, and I wanted to share some information with you on buoyancy and density. So first thing, um, let's look at this formula. Which formula is used to calculate the pressure exerted by an object? Which one do you pick? Did you pick D? I hope so, because it is pressure is calculated by force divided by the area. So in the course, there is a lab for density and buoyancy that you are welcome to look at, but we are not doing that lab or the lab report, but you can check out the video. What we are doing is looking at principles today that involve buoyancy and density. So look at the review sheet, questions three through five are what we're going to cover today. The first thing I'd like you to do is think about what is buoyancy. What do you think? What is it? So there's a video that I'm going to share with you. I'll, I'll place it in the content that you can watch. And also I will link it into the lesson so that you can get it. But think about and take notes on buoyancy. And remember that buoyancy is the force that keeps things floating. So everything we're talking about has to do with forces in some way or another. So forces on an object, we have some examples here to help us out, are produced by the surrounding fluids. They push the object. And it depends on two things. The first one that it depends on is the density of the object. The second thing that it depends on is the density of the fluid. Both of those play a role in whether something is buoyant or not. And buoyancy and density kind of go together. So let's talk about density first, and then we'll go back to that buoyancy because as it showed right here, it depends on the density of an object. So that means we have to know what density is. So density is the stuff or the mass in a given amount of space or volume. And again, there's a math formula for this. We have density is the mass divided by the volume. And the units you usually find it in are, are grams per cubic centimeter. So we determine volume by multiplying the height times the width times the length. Or sometimes you see it as L times L times L. That's where we get our cubic centimeters. So lots, you can have lots of variety with this. You can have a lot of volume, but not a lot of mass. That would be an example like our balloon here. There's volume there, but not mass. So that's not very dense. Or you can have something like our bowling ball here that has a lot of mass, and a little volume, so it's considered dense. It's based on how close the molecules are packed together. So here is a cartoon drawing example of something that is less dense over here on the left and something that is more dense on the right. All right, thinker question for you. Which has the greatest density? How do you know? So C has the most density. It is more dense in this case than water because it is not floating. It's down at the bottom. Now this item here, A, the water is denser than whatever this object is here. That is A. So with density, it's all about how much matter 
is present in the volume. So we have a ping pong ball and a golf ball, both about the same size, same volume, but there's definitely more matter in the golf ball. That's why it feels heavier. And then we have buoyancy, which is the upward force. So in this case, we have a ping pong ball and a golf ball, which is more buoyant and why? Did you list that it's the ping pong ball because it has less density? Density affects buoyancy. The more above the water, the more buoyant the object. Less dense than water means it's going to float. So we have to determine, you know, what sinks, what floats. We already talked about the density. If it's more dense, or less dense, whether it will sink or flow, and then what happens if they have equal density? Sometimes that happens too. Here is an example. So ice has a density of 0.97 grams per cubic centimeters, and water has a density of one 0, 0.00 grams per cubic centimeters. And you will see in the picture here that there is some ice above and some below the water line. So 97% of the ice is below the water line and 3% is above because of the density. That's an example of when something has a density that is close to matching another. It might not sink all the way to the bottom or float on top of the surface. In this case, there's some above and some below because their densities are close together. So 97% of this iceberg is below the water level because of the density level. The object will float if it weighs less than the water it disperses. Here's another problem. So the block is floating in water. The water density is one gram per cubic centimeters and about 25% of the block is below the water. What do you estimate the density of the block to be? So you're using this as a help. What do you think? You would estimate the density to be 0.25 grams per cubic centimeter. All right, so we've talked a little bit about uh, density and buoyancy. Here's a little bit more about flotations and the principles of flotation. You can read through this. Um, a real life example that we use is submarines. Submarines have to displace the weight of water on whether they will rise or sink, and that's how they increase or decrease their volume. Okay, we've covered a lot of information. Take a second, summarize what you've learned. Write it out right now. Talk to yourself. What have you learned? All right, and then you can go in and take the practice quiz to help you see how well you're doing. You have the review questions to help you out. You can pause these to help you out to get the information you need. Make sure you understand the concepts and then today's code word for attendance is here on the board. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day and we will see you next time.